everyone, welcome to my first video of 2015. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, 2014 was awesome. So I'm gonna talk about uh, my resolutions, my year, what I'm planning on doing this year, some ideas that I'm having. Uh, I have a big question for you all as well about my battle reports. Well, it's not very big, but I think it's pretty big. We'll see. So uh, yeah, so my painting challenge was a great success. Um, I'll have a video up to probably tomorrow sometime uh, showing my score in Army. I finished a 35 point score in Army. Well, that was, that was good. It was a good successful um, painting month for December. Uh, I was able to get, as I said, 35 points painted for Scorn, so that's cool. And I'll be bringing them to Adepticon. And now it is December, it's January now. And I will be painting uh, Tyranids for the next two months. It's going to be the first two months Tyranids. I really don't have any combination of the words Tyranids in January. I can't think of one. So, grab a brush, grab paints, grab a model, and let's paint along. So please join me on this uh, this journey, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Hey everyone, so welcome to my Tyranid painting challenge. The next couple months, I'm gonna be painting Tyranids, because Tyranids are actually, you know, my, the first army that got me back into 40K, and uh, I have a lot of Tyranid models that need to be painted. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be focusing on a lot of models I don't normally use in my armies. I'm gonna try to expand my army so that way I don't have the same frequent lists and battle reports. So you'll be seeing a lot of new monstrous creatures. I think there's gonna be six new monstrous creatures that I will be painting over the next couple months, including some that uh, are really special. So I'll start off with the Exocrine here. And uh, yeah, so I just might as well start talking and painting. So what I like to do with my paint jobs for my Tyranids, I like to use a couple paints. Uh, I forgot to take this one out. First one I really like is Ghost White by Reaper. And uh, I use it in combinations with whites to, uh, to get a nice color. I also use an airbrush sometimes as well, but today I'm gonna be using just a normal uh, paintbrush because if I didn't use this, if I used an airbrush, then I wouldn't have anything to talk about because I just have an airbrush mask on. No fun from that. So what should I talk about? First of all, um, well, I'm gonna bring up, I wanna bring up later um, this week's painting tutorial for the warp because it's gonna bring up my big question to you all because it's going to polarize people, I think. Uh, but I'm curious, because I really do listen to what people say. I... There's Rubik leaving. So, I really do listen to what people say. You know, if, if my, all my viewers hate a certain thing, I'm not going to keep making it. I.e., um, my most hated video of the year goes to Blood Angel Codex Review, part one. Um, that was a gong show. I'm sorry. Just unfortunately, the quality was not there. It's okay. Let's well, get painting. So all I'm going to be doing is air, is dry brushing. You know, getting some nice detail on these guys. So that's it. See, look at that. Colors are starting to come in. I like that dusted appearance. Guys, car alarms going off. Um, yeah, you know, it was a, it was a really good year. It was an excellent 2014, you know, it was an awesome year. And I'm excited to see 2015, I really am. Um, might as well start talking about my, what my New Year's resolutions are, at least my goals this year. I don't know if I have really resolutions that pertain to miniature wargaming. I should do a video on that, that'd be kind of a fun video. My 2014, 15 New Year's resolutions for wargaming. But uh, my first resolution would obviously be to make as many good videos as I can this year, especially battle battle reports, because battle reports are the most popular. They are, and um, like I don't need to worry about miniature painting one on one because thanks to the warp who gets a preview of that, I have already made enough miniature painting one on ones. Like the one I filmed last this week, and the one that will be you know the one that was in the warp this week is airing in late June, early July. So, there are going to be Miniature Painting one ones which is actually, Miniature Painting one ones are actually my, my favorite series to make, um, because I feel that it, it's kind of my, my contribution to the miniature wargaming community. Um, each person has their own contribution, you know, and it's my main one. Now, my battle reports, I love making battle reports, so I love doing everything regarding miniature wargaming. 
But uh, my battle reports, you know, are battle reports, and, and a lot of company, a lot of awesome people make battle reports, and um, it's just, yeah, you know, I love my battle reports, but I feel like they're not as as original as I, as my miniature painting one one. That series is, you know, is what. I get a lot of a lot of good messages about that people come in, they look at miniature painting one one, and it really helps them in painting their miniatures, and that's what I love. That's just it makes me feel awesome, because that was my goal when creating the series a long time ago. It was created over two years ago, uh, three years almost, I think, maybe two years ago, 2012. I'm pretty sure. So June of 2012, I'm pretty sure was my first episode of miniature painting one one. And that was my goal in creating the series. And now that it's a part in hand to the warp. Um, but, um, so look at that. All the details coming out. You can see it now. Um, the warp potential, potentially, but now I filmed up to part, like I'm in the 70s right now for filming. You know, and. Rubik's doing something. And now, you know, like there's gonna be 70 videos at least. Um, and it's awesome. It just really makes me happy because I'm hoping that it really helps um, new painters and old, and old painters alike, but it's gonna be, it's primarily, you know, you know what I mean? It's primarily a series designed for new painters um, to help them, you know, because one of the things that I find, I, I personally believe this. Now, I know a lot of people feel this too, is that when getting into the hobby, they're intimidated. The painting aspect can be very intimidating. It really is. You know, and sometimes they see, um, bat like, painting tutorials. Uh, and the painting tutorials can be just as intimidating because you see these techniques being used and you really don't know how they're broken down or how to use it. Wonder what circumstances do you use them. And uh, that's what Miniature Painting 101's been about, you know? I go into things in good detail. In fact, I've gotten several messages lately from free content people asking me, how do you do the certain method? And I said, oh, there's a Miniature Painting 101 for that. But here, you know, here's how I do it in the meantime, because it's a bit of a, it's a while before it comes out for free. And I always tell them, like, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not a jerk and be like, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait for number, I don't know why I have an accent as well, but I'm like, I, I'm not one of those people that says, I'm sorry, you have to, you know, pay or wait to see, you know, I'll tell you how. But uh, if you wait a little, if you wait long enough, you'll see as well how I do it as well. But at that point, you'll probably be long done. Um, yeah. You know, you'll be long done your painting of that particular color. Uh, but yeah, that's my legacy. So I want to keep making videos. That is it. Videos, videos, videos is how I'm going to do it. I want to make more videos this year than I did last year. That's my goal. And I think it's going to be pop possible. I don't know what's going to happen. Now, obviously, my video numbers were artificial. I wouldn't say artificially inflated, but they were inflated by the sense that I do multiple part reviews. And there were a lot of reviews last year because there were a lot of new books last year. And this year, I don't personally see as many reviews, at least on books, because... Um, my reason is because I they're running out of codices. Like unless they want to restart on sixth edition codices, you know we're going to be at a cool stage. Well, sixth edition is very close to seventh edition, and minus um, a couple things like the force organization charts, each with their own detachment stuff. Sixth edition codices are very very compatible with uh, seventh edition, right? And what was I saying? Yeah, so. But we're at a stage right now where there's only one or arguably two 6th um, edition or 5th edition codices left in the game. You know, Sisters of Battle. Sisters, Adeptus Sororitas, they need a new codex. Bad. They need some love and they need... They need a new codex. They really do. But uh, Adeptus Sororitas and Necrons. That's it. You know, after that, they're pretty much done. And that's it. And then they don't know... I don't know what they're going to do afterwards. Maybe go to Dark Angels and Chaos again? You know, I don't I don't know. I just don't know. So I'm curious about what 2015 has in store for all of the... Um, 
all the codices because we're gonna be at the set like soon. Rumor has it that a new Necron codex could drop in the next month, maybe two months, but month at earliest. You know, by the end of this month, it could even be dropped. So we're gonna be at the stage where all of a sudden all the dexes are up to date. Codex creep has become almost a thing of the past. Almost, you know? And uh, I'm curious what happens next. Because GW is a machine. Like, it, it doesn't, it, GW doesn't stop. Because once you stop, you stop making money. Right? Once they stop releasing stuff, they're gonna, they don't make as much money. They make a lot of money off their reviews, off their new codices and stuff. So, I'm very curious what's going to happen. Look at him. He's done his first coat. So that's the first coat. And I'm just going to build up some successive whiter layers, darker each time. Yeah. These, to these Tyranids aren't going to be painted to my absolute highest standard, but they're not the low standard by any means. They're my normal standard for tabletops and stuff. Um, so, yeah. You know, I don't know. I really just don't know what tier, uh, what ha what's up in store for 2014, 15. Um, the next thing I really want to do, and this brings me to my big question of the day for you guys. Now, lately, my, my painting with Jays have gotten slightly lower views than normal. So it might be a secret for all you people out there who are listening. You guys get to, you get, you get, and girls get in on the secret that I'm going to mention. So here's my painting tutorial model for this week. Now, some of you have picked up that this guy's been in the background of my videos for a while. I'd like to introduce you guys to Justin. His name is Justin Titan. And he's been in the background, in fact, if you look in the background of most of my miniature, my, my videos regarding painting, um, my painting with J videos, he's been in the background. Here, he is a Imperial Knight Castigator. And I tried him out today in Battle Report. So he's a Castigator, he's an Imperial Armor model. And he's pretty cool. Like he's not, you know, he's my this week's painting tutorial model for the warp. So if you want to know how I paint him, obviously go check out the warp. But um, did I just change the camera angle? I did. All right, whatever. So he's cool. All right. And I tried him out today, and he did pretty well, I'd say. But uh, he's imperial armor. He's not a normal. Um, he's not a normal model. And he, you know, he's imperial armor. He's he's forge world or imperial armor. Some people say, like, for those of you who don't know, uh, anybody new here, imperial armor typically refers to forge world models that are not typically in codices. So yeah, imperial armor, you know, they're really cool and they're they're interesting models. They tend to be actually really nice, but they're more expensive. So my big question to you is, I want to start using for this year. I would really like to start using um, to make to differentiate my battle reports from. For mini war gamings and a couple other the bigger names and battle reports, I want to start using Imperial Armor models. You know, I would really love to do it because Imperial Armor models are cool and they have their own special rules and stuff. And they don't, some of them obviously, some of them tend to be a little bit, um, I wouldn't say o OP, like, you know, overpowered, but they tend to be good. Because with, with Forge World models, if they weren't good, you wouldn't really buy them. Maybe for the aesthetics, but um, you know, you just you wouldn't buy them if they weren't decent or cool looking. And there are a couple, you know, there are some Forge World models in use for mini wargame, but not many, not many at all. And especially for like some armies, like the Imperial Knights, for example, that'd be they're really cool. They have so much flavor. You know, there's five Imperial Knights from Forge World. And uh, they have so much more flavor than the normal Imperial Knight that everyone uses in their battle reports. And I really want to just start incorporating them. And so my question to you is, my big question of the day, is what do you think about me using Imperial Armor models in my, in my battle reports? Will they break the game? Because they will. You know, in some ways, they're not going to break the game. But uh, they're going to give me a slight advantage. But that's not how I play, you know what I mean? I just want to bring new models to the table. And... Um, or do you, th you know, do you think they're OP? Do you think it'd be really fun? Do you think it'd be cool? I, th the way I play, you know, you know me, I'm not the most competitive, but I just think that they bring a really cool new layer of, to the game. I really do. You know, it'd be cool seeing a battle report and seeing models that you just don't normally see in other models, in other games. And people, you know, it'd be in a quasi more competitive atmosphere, you know, and cool. And 
That's my thoughts, you know? What do you think? Do you like the idea of me including the Imperial Armor models? Or do you not like me including the idea of Imperial Armor models? Because today I use the Castigator in a battle report. The battle report will probably be out in a couple weeks. Uh, I played a game against Blood Angels. Um, a really good guy named David. I noticed also, on a side note, it's like one in every three war gamers named Dave. If you, like, if you name your kid Dave, then you're going to be a war gamer, which is pretty cool. So maybe I should name my first all my kids Dave, and then they get into war gaming too. But uh, we played, and we used the Castigator today, and I asked my opponent ahead of time, it was okay, and he said, yeah, sure, you know, he's a good guy, and, and the best part about it is he didn't find it too OP. He didn't, you know, he thought it was good. It did well. He was scared of it, but it didn't, it didn't, like, it didn't win me the game so handed. I'm not saying whether or not I won or lost, but it wasn't like I just put that on the table and was like, I win, you know? It didn't happen at all like that. So, yeah, I just, I think it'd be cool. I really do. And plus, now there's a, I'm going to make a video about this. Um, I got an amazing gift from one of my viewers. Now, I don't have, you know, I'm not putting pressure on any of y'all to send me gifts or anything like that. If you want to send me gifts, send it to, no, I'm kidding. Um, but a really just awesome, awesome, awesome guy. You know, Cody Roo, and if you're listening to, Co if Cody Roo's out there and you're listening to this video, Cody Roo, you just broke my brain with, with insanity and niceness. I was almost in, like, tears. I was so moved by this gift. I got two, I got a, a gift from Cody Roo this year, and my wife was involved in, the, in hiding it from me. So, um, it was, it was hidden from me. There was two, there were two boxes. First box was my first gift. Now, this the craziest thing about it. I got gifts, right? I don't expect this at all. I'm not someone who just expects random gifts in the mail. And so... Um, in the first gift that I got... Now, I, got, I opened up both these on Christmas Day. Um, because I didn't even know... But I didn't know about them, essentially, until Christmas Day. Um... So the first gift I opened had my favorite, my favorite Imperial Armor models in it. it I got a set of Grot Tanks. And now those who know me, I've talked about Grot Tanks more times I can count. I love Grot Tanks. The idea of Grot Tanks to me just makes me happy. And I want to build a list eventually of all Grots. I want to do a Grot army where it's like cans, Grots, and Grot... Um, grot tanks. Now, obviously, I have to have an HQ, so I'll probably you know a non grot HQ. But maybe I'm thinking about like customly making like a big mech grot or something. That'd be kind of fun. There we go. Look at him. So I got that. Now, that just blew my freaking brain. And the next box that I opened just blew my brain even more. I was completely floored at the amazing kindness of the first gift. And I'm going to make a video about this. I'm going to show this, these models off in um, probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, there's a reason for that. I'll, yeah, I don't want to go into, into it. But yeah, I just can't show it right now. So... Um, The next box that I opened was customly made. Um, they were they were put together. You okay, Rubik? I think you just had too much water to drink. Um, oh, here's the hiccups. So, um, Cody Roo, oh, sorry, I should clarify, I did know about one of the packages. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know about one of the packages, but I knew about the second one, because the second one arrived via normal mail. The first one arrived via, uh, to my wife's work. So... I did know about one of the packages, but the second package was actually the one I knew about that I knew that about that he sent me something. 
Uh, it was he um, he kit bashed Grot tanks for me using parts of other models. And uh, I don't know if any of you have seen the battle reports with with Cody Rue, uh, me wargaming on my channels. Uh, he does did a he does an awesome job kit bashing his vehicles, uh, his uh, Gorkatron and Morkatron, which are basically looted wagons. But they look amazing. Like they were just awesome. Second time, first time I saw them, I was like, "Oh, that's amazing." And uh, he kit bashed in the same spirit. He kit bashed some Grot tanks for me, and they look unbelievable. And they are going to be in their they're on their own video coming up um, in the next couple days. I'm going to make a video about it. Um, yeah, for sure. So I made I made sure and I sent him a little something as well. Because I was just blown away at the amazing niceness of Mr. Of Mr. Cody Roo. So, there you go. So he's done. All the white is done. It just blew my ring out of the niceness. I floored me entirely. So that was probably the coolest gift I got this Christmas season. Was, um, was the, the Grot Tanks from, from Cody Roo. That was just... Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable, you know. Now what I'm gonna do on this guy, I am going to paint blue. So that for me. Um, so yeah, that's one of my, so one of my, now the Grot Tanks, uh, Grot Tanks, well, I'm going to have to buy some more Grot Tanks from Forge World. I'm probably going to wait till Adepticon, because I'm thinking Forge World will be at Adepticon, and then I can buy them at Adepticon, and, um, and avoid paying shipping. And also it's cheaper to buy it at Adepticon, so... But I'm going to buy some models probably at the Depticon, and then uh, I'm going to have a Grot Tank army. Army of Grot Tanks. That's going to be amazing. So that's my, yeah, that's that brings me back to my question. Do you think I should use Imperial Armor models? I can't wait, because not many Battle Report people use them. And they bring a lot of flavor to uh, to the game. They really do. And, and most of them don't, most of them aren't that OP, especially for the armies I play. You know, I don't, there's not that many Tyranid, the, the Tyranid one, there's a Tyranid one. Um, what's he called, the Dimacaron, he's pretty cool. Maybe I'll paint up him in future videos or something. Having a Dimacaron would be kind of cool. Only problem is then I have to buy an Imperial Armor book to play him, but it's okay. So now I'm just painting the carapace. Yeah, so that just floored me with kindness. Um, well, the way I'm pushing on the table right now is making a knocking sound. Um, what else? Yeah, it was a good holiday, you know? I, it was very quick. I spent most of the time driving. I really did. And, uh, it was good. It was busy, really busy time. I saw my family. They don't really understand what I'm doing for a living, so uh, that's always an interesting conversations. My mother has no idea that you. My mother does doesn't under comprehend that YouTube pays a little bit. Like I can make money off YouTube, and she's she thinks it's just free. So she doesn't necessarily see it as a positive way of me spending my time. 
But uh, she just, just she's hilarious. So. So I'm just going to paint on the carapace in a couple thin layers and uh, get a little bit of shading near the, the recesses. But uh, yeah, if I wanted a perfectly smooth surface, I probably should have airbrushed it, but it's okay. He's going to look good. I'm excited to try the uh, Exocrine in Battle Reports. I think he'd be pretty good. He'd be pretty good against my normal Dark Angels because this guy is like a, I think he's a pretty much a Terminator killer. So... He's cool, and uh, I think he'll be fun. He's one of the better monster creatures, I think, for the Tyranid Codex. The Tyranids have a lot of monster creatures, but uh, not all of them are very good. Some of them are quite weak. You know, Tyranids have a lot of monster creatures, but arguably none of the best five monster creatures in the game. Well, maybe not best three. So, that's okay. Yeah, holidays were good. Saw my in-laws. Um, I see my father. I usually see my. I see my family. I'm not a very, I'm not a really family-oriented person, to be honest. I'm a really, I don't know, I'm not busy, I'm a busy person, but I'm also, you know, it's a long story, I don't want to get into that with you guys, but, uh, yeah, I don't see my family very often. I see them usually three or four times a year, max. Catch up, see how it's going, you know. I'm probably going to lose a little bit of weight this year, maybe, we'll see. My grandfather called me fat, that was kind of funny. He blamed my wife, he called me fat. I love grandparents. They're always hilarious like that. So. Maybe I should lose a little weight. Eh, that's pretty stereotypical for a New Year's resolution. Lose weight. I love... This is Calador Sky, for those wondering. It's my favorite color. It's kind of the Smurf blue. But it's my... I love it. It's a great blue. And it's a great contrast, I find, to the white of the body. So, this guy's going to be a lot of fun to use. I'm, yeah, so I'm excited to use my Exocrine. I'm going to be painting a lot of guys over the next couple months. A lot of them. Because I want to get my Tyranid army. My Tyranid army is by far the lowest proportion of models painted out of any army I have. Um, I will add, one of my other resolutions is to finally add some other competitive models, not competitive, but other cool models to my armies. You know, um, I, I will agree that a lot of my lists sometimes seem very similar because I really like Deathwing. Um, I like Deathwing more than Ravenwing or Greenwing, though both of them are, you know, have their own competitive abilities. But um, I like Deathwing. Deathwing are my thing. And so I'm going to, you know, get some knights in in the near future. And I'm going to get, um, I'm going to paint up Azrael, because Azrael also makes, at least in the short term, he makes um, Deathwing troops. Now, there's a huge rumor that I believe will happen. I believe it's going to be true. Um, most codices, other than Grey Knights, no, sorry, code, sorry, sorry, let's start again. Um, almost every new codex has removed the ability to move around the Force Organization chart. They've removed that. So you can't take this guy to make these guys troops. That doesn't happen anymore. And, like, Grey Knights lost the ability to take Paladins. Grey Knight, uh, Orcs lost the ability to take uh, Knobs. I am willing to bet that Dark Angels are going to lose the ability. And since, especially seeing that uh, Assault Marines aren't even troops anymore for Blood Angels, I don't believe Deathwing are going to be troops much longer for for. Dark Angels. I just don't see that. I think that's going to be one of the things they're going to take out. Um, because they don't they don't like the elites being taken as troops. Same with Ravenwing. I don't think they're going to be able to be taken as troops much longer either. Which will force Blood Angel players to take like some 
Green Wing. Because it'll be their only option besides Scouts. Um, but it'll also force, like, new HQs. And I think that'll be kind of... It'll be interesting. You know what? It's not a terrible bad thing. Because I've used Belial in every battle report for Dark Angels thus far. Except for, like, Company Master and a couple, you know... And it will force me to use different... It'll allow me to use other guys. And that'll be cool. As I, said, I want to use Azrael right now because he, in the short term, makes guys troops. As I said, we'll see what happens in uh, in the future. Because, uh, I don't know, maybe Dark Angels are close to getting a new codex. Maybe they're not. You know, these are all just rumors right now. But they do make sense relative to the other codices. You know, um... Grey Knights still have the ability to take Terminators as troops, but they were troops in the last Codex. They just they lost the ability to take um, Paladins and Purifiers. So we'll see. I'm very curious. Because I like the Dark Angels. I really do. This year, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to add more to my Dark Angels. And I'm going to add more to my Grey Knights. I agree. My Grey Knight lists are becoming monotonous too. Now, obviously, I have an Imperial Knight now that I can add in. Because Knights. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint up. Um, it's really funny. I had a really cool opponent complain me in this week's battle report. And he played, uh, he was a relatively new player named James. And uh, he, it was out this week, so if you guys want to go check it out, my Necron versus uh, Grey Knight battle report. Uh, he actually asked me ahead of time if I had a problem with Dread Knights. Do I have a, like a rule against them? And I really don't. I just don't play them. And I really have no excuse not to. So I will start playing them in the future. I have a couple, and I'm going to paint them up, and they'll be in battle reports. It just takes a little time, especially now that I'm focusing on Tyranids. That's the downside to being kind of... I've kind of become the jack-of-all-trades guy. Not well. I'm not saying I'm the amazing jack-of-all-trades. Because I lose a lot, but I have a great time doing it. But my battle reports now, there are very few people who play that many armies. You know, like, a mini wargaming has um, several guys. And combined, they play several armies. But Matt only really plays two armies. You know, in some of the, um, they are, they do expand their army lists sometimes in the uh, campaigns. But, uh, they typically play, you know, t Tyranids for Matt, and Dave play or sorry, Tyranids and Necrons for Matt, and Dave plays, um, Blood Angels, and, and Chaos are obviously his preferred, and Chaos, Dark, uh, Blood Angels, and he recently got into Space Wolves. You know, uh, but my studio armies right now, I have six playable studio armies. Five or six right now. And that's it. You know, that's the downside to being them is that I'm always focusing on one of them, but I'm not focusing on the others. And people really want me to focus on, you know, like right now, Grey Knights, people still say, oh, you should build some dark, some Dread Knights. And I really will. I'm going to build some Dread Knights. I promise. But, uh, not in the short term, because this is Tyranid month. And I really want to get, you know, an Exocrine painted up. And a couple other models painted up, you know. A I got a Swarm Lord finally painted up. I painted up a Swarm Lord for uh, the, a Warp series called Face Off. But, um, you know, I just don't have the time, unfortunately. And then people are still telling me, like, I would love, by the way, for the record, I would love to collect another army on top of this. But I do have some Space Marines. I will eventually make a Space Marine army. I've pretty much chosen the faction. I'm pretty certain it's going to be Imperial and Fists. And they're going to be fun. My favorite HQ for the, dark, for the Space Marines are the, uh, is... Lysander, so he's going to be a lot of fun to play. And he's already painted up. He's in also face-off as well. So, that's my goal. This year is kind of my make or break year. Uh, I'm going to give my videos everything I got. You know? And I really hope it pays off. 
I really do. I'm gonna work hard. And as I mentioned in my video, my New Year's Eve video, I got almost a million views last year, just underwards. It's like 900 and something, 970,000 or something. It was ridiculous. And I didn't see that coming at the beginning of the year. And, and a lot of it had to do with me stepping away from mini wargaming that finally gave me the time and the kick in the butt that I needed to work on my own stuff. Because at mini wargaming, I was working a lot. I had, I had two jobs as well. And I was making videos. And I love making videos, but I was making videos for Matt and Dave. And when I came home, I was tired. And I wanted to spend time with my wife. And my videos, they weren't necessarily put in the back burner because I still make codex reviews and such. But um, I didn't, you know, nowhere near as the number of videos that I make now. So, look at that. He's blue. I think my color scheme was probably um, unintentionally inspired by the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> because that really is the Blue Jay. Blue. That's funny. So for the gun, I'm going to just go Cantor Blue, I'm thinking. I cleaned up my, my table. And I forgot to remove all the colors that I typically use for my tyranids before I clean up the table. So my paints aren't out. That's the fang. Let me see if I can find my paints quickly. There go. There it is. Can't over look. So that's one of my, is that this year I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to make a lot of videos. Primarily battle reports is what I really want to make more of. You know, I would love to be at like part 100 by the end of the year. It probably won't be at part 100. It'll probably be, my goal is to get to like part 70, like a battle report number 70 by the end of the year. That'd be kind of cool. And the warp and, and the free are going to be, you know, getting about equal numbers of battle reports. I don't ever, I will never ever forget the free people you know i will not become a freemium channel um the, the warp i got a really the reason why i'm going to talk about this is i got a, a letter the other day um it wasn't the nicest worded and by that I mean that wasn't it wasn't like broken english or anything i'm saying I, I i was kind of like verbally assaulted by a and I, I stupidly opened up the letter because it was titled, like, The Warp. I think The Warp was the name of the title. And somebody really, really berated me um, for making paid content. You know, I'm breaking the spirit of YouTube, and I'm just a sellout. And, like, the person was unsubscribed. The best part about this was it was a new person. And they subscribed to my content after watching one of my battle reports. And one of my codex reviews, and then found out when I, in one of the videos I mentioned the warp, and then they looked up what the warp was, and they were really upset, like really upset about the warp, the existence of the warp. Now, obviously, not the uh, not the uh, 40k warp. I mean, my my YouTube channel called the warp, and they decided that the next thing that they should do is to email me and yell at me for having the warp because apparently that makes me no better than any of the other YouTubers out there that are only doing this for the money. And I was like, uh, I'm, I didn't respond. To be honest, I'm not responding. I don't really want to respond to that kind of stuff. Um, he just took it the time I was dated, email me, which was really weird. You know, I just thought it was really, I always think it's weird when people take the time out of their day to send hate mail. But uh, maybe thought he was doing me good, you know, trying to save my my YouTube soul, you know, because apparently I'm just greedy and doing this for the money. But I'm not. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing paid content in the first place is because the free content just doesn't cut it, unfortunately, 100% that I would do it. And I, I know for a fact that if I, I know that if I released all my paid content as free, um, it wouldn't make as much. So, that's it. I'm doing this because I want to do this for a living. 
And the best way of me doing this for a living is having two channels and releasing content. And I, as I said, I'll never forget the, fr the free people. I, I, I argue that this, I would really, other than the fact that I haven't done painting tutorials, I'm going to see if I can do maybe one painting tutorial a month for free. That I do agree. I haven't done many painting tutorials lately, but how long has it been since a miniature painting 101 comes out? Every week, you know, every week you guys and girls can check out my channel and you'll see a miniature painting 101 every week and they are in, in essence a painting tutorial because I break down the steps of painting and, and you know but some people I agree some people just really want to see a painted model they want to see a model painted from start to finish and uh, they're tired of all these you know uh, quick tips as, as many wargaming calls them or my miniature painting 101 sorry I'm looking for I'm not black but not black so I get that, okay? In that sense, yes, my content isn't as great as it once was, because in that one essence, but how I do battle reports weekly, you know, or a couple of months, you guys getting battle reports, miniature painting 101, this painting with Jay, where we're sitting down and we're painting tons of models, you know, uh, Q&J has been on and off, it'll be on, t it'll be again this week, uh, I'm probably gonna film it tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. So... I just, it, yeah, I, I shrug it off, you know. I'm going to be like Taylor, this year I'm going to be like Taylor Swift, and the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. The players are going to play, and I'm just going to shake it off. Shake it off. Because this year, as I said, it's going to be a good year. I feel it in my bones. It's going to be a good year of me working hard and getting somewhere. And I'm already really seeing my hard work pay off. I really am. You know, uh, I didn't even know how many views I had last year until I just checked one day, checked the day before yesterday, and it was like a million almost, and I said, wow. You know, a million views. So, I'm not upset. I'm not phased by it. I'm really not. And to the, if you're watching, I don't think the person will be, uh, I'm not going to name drop or anything. But if a person's listening to this video, I, I'm sorry that you feel that I broke the spirit of YouTube. But you can't, like the amount of time it takes to make a video, I, I urge people at home, if you want to, if you're curious, try to recreate a video that us, that we make, you know, a battle report, um, a tutorial. You know, try to recreate one. Do one for your own channel and see how long it takes and the amount of effort it takes to, to make one. And you'll realize that why we unfortunately have to do these things, you know, because we love doing these things, but we have to do them and we have to kind of make money doing it, unfortunately. And money sucks. You know, thinking about money really sucks because I wish I could just do whatever I want to do for free. But that doesn't work because my wife and I have animals and we have to take care of them and you need money. So unfortunately, money makes the world around. But I don't, it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get rich. Rubik is whining a little bit for some reason. Um, but it'll be okay. I'm going to work hard. And to those people of free content, you're going to get the best content this year that I've ever put out. So expect some amazing content. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm not amazing, but I'm going to try my best. It's going to be good content this year. Really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm always thankful for my subscribers. I really am. You know, I really am. I, I This year, as I said in my video, last year was nothing without you. You know? My subscribers are amazing. And for everyone that hates on me, there's 10 that just send positive messages. And it's awesome. I love getting emails from people and telling them, like, I got messages a couple times lately telling them how much miniature painting one is made to them. I'm like, that's amazing. You know, I, I love that. You know, um, I do. I think I have a good relationship with my subscribers. One day I'd like to do a live show. I'd love to get the live shows back on the air. But as you saw, um, as you saw, based on the quality of my broadcast for the uh, Blood Angels Codex review, 
apparently my computer is not good enough to do live shows well. And until that is possible, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to just create, I don't want to just make bad live shows, you know, that's just not, if I do something, I want to do it right. I really do, you know, so. Look at this, he's really come together. Right now, all I'm doing is I'm painting the, uh, The nails, black, because um, I'm gonna just do a quick, a quick blend on them. But this is like table. This is arguably tabletop. You know, I have definitely more than three colors. As shading, as the whites, as blues. I'm gonna add some reds now. Uh, the reason why I had reds is a tertiary color. It's just it's, it's, it's a bright color, gives a little contrast. And to me, it's kind of like the heating up, you know? I love the contrast of, like, the cold and heat of the same model. So, that's what I do. I like it. <laughs> Well, that's drying. <laughs> Maybe I should start on the ticking. So I'm gonna take some Lothar Blue. And here's how I do ticking. Now people do ticking in a variety of ways. On the, I call it ticking, but like the feathering or the ticking, I call it so, the ticking. On, this is gonna be in a future miniature painting 101 as well. So you're getting a little preview. Um, Taking my brush, right? I just do that. Essentially, I'm trying to like separate out the bristles, and then you can take your brush. No, I need to thin it down slightly. <laughs> this one is not my, the brush that I was thinking of using. Where is it? It's probably that one. I have several of these uh, Games Workshop brushes. Ah, uh, this is it. There we go. See, now there's a good separation. And the bristles. And I just drag it along the surface of the miniature. I should zoom in a little bit to show you this. So let's zoom in. Here we go. Key is just to thin down your paint slightly. And then the ticking. Look at that. It, come, it basically saves you a lot of time because you have the same brush strokes and it really does look like individual strokes. So that will be in a future video. I'm going to make a miniature painting one one this month about that. Tyranid kit armor. Look at that, it saved me so much time. And this is just the light blue. This is the Lothar blue. And in the 10 seconds I'm talking to you, I've already done an entire set, part of the care base. Let's take my time. Yeah. So my other big question to you, I think I would like to know, I would love to know actually, what are your, what are your miniature wargaming related, or even non-miniature wargaming related, what are your New Year's resolutions? You know, mine is going to be, I'm going to paint this year. This year is going to be the year of painting, getting all my armies painted, you know, no more tons of unpainted models, tons of different miniatures and battle reports. That's the kind of thing I'm looking forward to. You know, that's awesome. And I just accidentally mixed my paint. Uh, I mixed my Lothar and Blue with black. So there goes that one. Read it.
everything down. I'm just using some acrylic medium. Um, you know, I want to paint this year. I want to get this. These painting challenges have been nothing but awesome to me. I am not burned out at all. And I, now when I look at my shelves, I see empty space and it really encourages me. Plus, Tyrion has recently got some love and I want to get these models on the table. Like I want to get the new Zoan throw on the table in the next month. I want to get, I don't even have one yet. I got to order one. But um, I want to get the a couple spore pods on the table. And I want to, you know, start playing some fun new lists. And less, more variety, I think, would be awesome. I think less monotony, more variety. That's one of my big ones. And as I said, the Imperial Armor is on its way. I'm going to paint some Grot Tanks, thanks to Mr. Cody Roo. Uh, I'm going to meet people. I'm going to go to Adepticon. I'm going to Gen Con. Um, maybe even, I don't know. Like I, Maybe even I'll be able to plan a couple more trips. We'll see. Because I know there's a few gr gamer groups that really want me to come play with them. Maybe we'll see. No promises, but look at that. So now we're done. The ticking's all done on the carapace. Uh, at least the blue ticking. Now we gotta do white ticking to make it really pop. And then I'll do some quick blends and we're good to go. Like, this has been an hour and now this guy's like, this is not necessarily battle report worthy yet, but uh, it's getting there, you know? It's getting battle report worthy. Mm -hmm. So, that's cool. I'm also going to get, gonna have to get a new, uh, I'm going to have to make a new, um, what's it called? Palette. The palette's getting really gross. So I'm going to have to make a new palette this year. This palette that I'm currently using, that I've used in most of my miniature paint 101s lately, is just a container from Ferrero Rocher's, a chocolate, that uh, people buy me a lot of for some reason. So same method, just drag it across. Look at that, ticking down. Yeah, so so. I had a great time making my review video of the year. Because it was just cool to see you know, all the cool things I've done this year. Uh, I am, as I said, I'm stupidly looking forward to the Las Vegas Open, Gen Con, Adepticon, um, all the conventions really. But um, I'm only going to three at least. But one day I'd love to go to like Warhammer World. What else? Facebook, that was kind of cool. I got Facebook this year. Never been a really big Facebooker. Or if that's what they're called. I feel like an old fart saying Facebooker. It's like the internet. It's now on computers. Um, but it was cool. Yesterday I was talking with a viewer from Australia. I was like, whoa, that's kind of cool. I didn't even know there was a chat function in Facebook until recently. And apparently people kept trying to Facebook message me and I I didn't respond because uh, I didn't really know what was happening. So I'm funny. What else? My 40k series, How to Play 40k. It is serious. I know I keep saying this, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. No more excuses. I I'm just trying to figure out a way. I really I I thought of a cool idea for my next video. And I just want to see how, I'm thinking about how I'm going to execute it. There's a few ways to do it, and I just really want to get it right. So it'll probably be out next week. Um, but as I said, it'll probably be out next week. I, I'm just trying to figure out a way to do it. If not, I'm going to just remove a clip of it. But, uh, yeah. That's cool. 
And yeah, it's not that many parts. It's going to be probably 15 parts of a series. And uh, the next one is going to be, yeah, probably next week, I'm thinking. I think it's going to be the regular Wednesday content. Three, week, three weeks a month or something. And then one week, my goal is to maybe make a review, not a review, um, a painting tutorial. I want to do one painting tutorial a month for free because, um, you know, as a thank you for you, uh, you people watching my videos. I don't want to only make it for the paid content people because not everyone can pay. That's just the way it is. Not everyone wants to pay. You know, YouTube is a free medium. I agree with that, but it's also paid. So it's all cool. You know, that way I can just kind of keep everyone happy. Oh, you know? yeah. Because the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. And the players are going to play. I'm going to play games. And I'm going to shake it off. Shake it off. Look at that. Ticking's done. He looks good. He's bringing sexy back. Yeah. So what else should I do? Um, we're going to run out of time soon. I'm going to end it soon. But let's get some reds. Some quick reds. Onto this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red, thin it down greatly, and just uh, do a quick gradient of colors. Some quick glazing, I guess you will call it. I know the red's a little weird with my winter scheme, but I like it because it's a, it adds a little, it adds another color, so I don't ever get accused of you know three color minimum, and it just it, it's kind of like heating up. As I said, it's the contrast, the red and the blue, warm and the cold, and the claws are where the, the heat, kind of like the heat is coming from on the model. So I, I like it. And the reason why I originally did it, actually that, and also it matched another color scheme that I was working on, but it's all good. I love this. I'm excited to use this guy on the table. So he'll probably be in a future battle report. Well, he will. The question is how long? I don't know. I'm actually starting to get a little ahead of myself. That's another one of my goals for the upcoming year is to film and to get so far ahead. You know, not like mini wargaming ahead, but uh, almost that. So that I can actually consistently put out uh, content and it'll be predictable in the sense that, you know, you know that it will be on at 8 a.m., Eastern time, you know, and that you just know it will be up and it will be up, you know, a week beforehand and it'll be good. That's kind of my goal. And there's less of me freaking out last minute about videos. So we'll see about that. And see, I don't know, Michael, I'll have to work hard. I'm more sore at my other job, so we'll see. I would love to quit my job this year. We'll see. Maybe by the end of the year. That's my goal. Maybe by the end of the year I'll quit my job, my other job, not this job, and then just do these videos all day long, seven days a week. Have the time of my freaking life. Maybe not. We'll see what life has in store for me. You know? It's unpredictable. I do know a fact that I will have a painted exocrine this year. And most likely a painted couple of Dread Knights. I know I haven't painted Pure all night. <laughs> and of course, this will dry much darker because it is thinned down. I don't know if you can see it, but the red comes, it looks really. La uh, bright but it does tend to dry a bit darker because it is thin down cool and then we'll get the eyes taken care of because the eyes will be the same color <laughs> where's my 
detail brush. Put it somewhere. Oh, I'll use this one. I hope all of you out there in internet land accomplish as much this year as I hope to accomplish. Um, yeah. And as I keep mentioning in all my videos, I would love to meet every single one of you. So if you are going to any of these conventions, um, find me. I will be running around, having a good time, and I am not against people talking to me in any way. You know, I am, I've been actually had such a great chance meeting people, actually. It's been fun, you know, meeting just new people at these conventions. What else? Uh, yeah, and there's the Google Wallet thing, but I'll have to talk about that in a future video. It won't ever become available. No, it may not become available for a while. So, there we go. Yeah, this isn't the highest, obviously, quality paint job, but it's not terrible by any means. You guys know exactly how long I've been working on this model, other than the fact that I base coded it before the, the tutorial, not the tutorial, the, the video. Um, Oh, little, I'm using uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, thinning it down a bit. Start continuing on my gradient. Just building a quick gradient of colors. That's the thing about battle reports is that they don't necessarily need to be the craziest quality. I do put effort into my, all my models, obviously. I don't ever paint, you know. I do as good a job as I can with the, job, with the amount of time I have. Might as well finish up with talking about New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve for me was pretty uneventful. I had a couple friends come over. Didn't really do much. I'm not a big party animal, but uh, it was good. You know, watch the ball drop from... Uh, New York and Niagara Falls. We kept flipping between the channels. New York had Taylor Swift, um, Shake It Off, you know, and uh, Niagara Falls had Keith Urban, which is one of my wife's, my wife is, really likes country music. So she, he is, uh, he's one of her favorite singers. So we would listen to Keith Urban. And he was pretty good, and I have to give him credit. I'm not the biggest country music fan, but uh, Keith Urban, he, he can sing, he really is, He's a performer, and he plays really well. Did I touch that with some other part? Just got a little bit of paint right there. That's okay. I'll clean that up after. There we go. And then I'll just repeat this quickly with... Wild Rider Red. And then... Drew. Look at this. This guy's really coming... to fruition. An hour. You know, it's just... it always amazes me how much you can get done if you just sit down and block out the outer world for an hour. One hour, you know? That's where I touched them. I see the mark where I went. Good. And maybe I should do a couple colors in the eyes. And he's good to go. This is it. I'm going to end probably after this step. 
because he is pretty much done. I think I'm going to be done now. He's got the ticking. He's got, you know, he looks, he has a, several different colors to him. The blue, the white, the dark blue, black, reds. There's a bit of a gradient on the reds. I think he's battle report ready. I also have to clean up that one spot of, of red that I got on him. But uh, besides that, just bring a little life to the eyes. There we go. The eyes look great. Well, look at that. I have an extra crit. He is good. And he is going to go kill some Dark Angels, probably. Because he doesn't like the Dark Angels, apparently. He wants to eat the worlds. That's cool. So, look at that, people. I now have an Exocrine. And now I have an Exocrine for the Battlefield. I'm going to spend some time, obviously, this month uh, fixing models and like working on squads that I just have neglected, maybe? I wouldn't say neglected, but... Um, I want to get the squads going like Gargoyles. Some monster creatures. Um, get that fixed. There we go. Some monster creatures that I haven't used. Exocrine. I want to get the Molochs. Look, I want to get my Trigons converted back to Molochs because Molochs are actually what I want to use right now. So maybe one or two of them as Molochs. We'll see. That's it. So let's end up here and uh, let's call it a day. Look how much work we got done. Good stuff. I hope you got as much done as I did. So. Yeah. That concludes this episode of Painting with Jay. I hope you got stuff done. Hope you got as much done as I did. You know, I'm going to base uh, the, the exocrine, get it on the table as soon as possible. In the end, I think it turned out well for an hour's work. I'm happy. I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with the job. And I uh, hope you had a good time. And so my two big questions to you is, first of all, what are your New Year's resolutions? And if, you know, feel free to leave talking about you know, life or about... Um, Wargaming, you know, any wargaming resolutions? I will play Talmor, for example. I'm not going to play Talmor, but it's a resolution. And the second big question is I want to ask you is, do you want me to start incorporating Imperial Armor models into my battle reports? Because that's a huge question. Because I think it's going to be a really polarizing question. Some people do not like Imperial Armor. They think it breaks the game, and they won't watch my battle reports. Other people might think it adds another flavor. I think it will add another flavor and add a lot of interestingness to battle reports, and also make my battle reports more original. So, what do you think? I'm really interested in what you think out there. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Paint with Jay. Hope you guys have accomplished. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. And subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. And until uh, next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.